Optionals can be a point of confusion for beginners in Swift. When you start to see a bunch of exclamation marks and question marks punctuating Swift code, you might wonder what's happening. Well, to start off with, when you see these two things at the end of a bit of code, that indicates you're looking at an optional. To explain what optionals are and why they're helpful, let's think about a common problem a programmer might come across. Let's say you're making an app that keeps track of your friends. You want to store their first name and their last name, and if they have one, the name of their cat. If I add myself to the app, it's easy. I'd put Katie for the first name, Catterwall for my last name, and Princess Ozma for my cat's name. But what if I was putting someone else into the app, like Ray? We know his first name is Ray and his last name is Wenderlich, but does he even have a cat? Jesse, does Ray have a cat? No, he's allergic. No cat. Um, what are we going to do? We need a way to model the concept that Ray doesn't have a cat. This is really sad. You might think to do something like use a boolean to track if someone has a cat or not, or use an empty string for the cat's name. There are lots of ways you could model this yourself, but you don't have to. Swift has a great solution for this, and it's called optionals. Optionals in Swift let us easily represent either a value or the absence of a value, which is called nil. I think of optionals as a kid-friendly version of Schrodinger's cat. If you're not familiar with the concept, there's a box that might have a cat inside, or it might have no cat. The trick is, you won't know if there's a cat until you open the box. <laughs> hey, there's my cat. This optional had a value of Princess Ozma. Thanks for helping out, Ozma. Let's check another one. But it looks like this one's nil. We could use optionals like this to solve our earlier dilemma. We could have an optional box for the cat's name, and there might be a cat's name inside, or it might be nil. One more important thing to note, optionals all have a type. So if we have an optional cat, you won't open the optional and find a cacodemon inside. It's either going to be a cat or no cat, an int or no int, a string or no string. Now that you've got an idea of what optionals are about, let's see what they look like in code. To make our first optional, let's use that cat name example. Create a variable called cat name and make the type a string. To turn this into an optional string, all you need to do is add a question mark at the end of the type. You can see in the sidebar that if you don't give an optional a value right away, the default value is set to nil. To make this example less sad, change the value to Princess Ozma. And in the sidebar, we see the value is set to Princess Ozma. But if you try to print out the value, you see optional Princess Ozma in the console. That's because the value is still wrapped up inside the optional. We'll get into how to unwrap optionals in another video. But first, how do we change an optional back to having no value? To set an optional back to nil, just use the keyword nil instead of a value. Before we move on to the unwrapping Katie mentioned, we'll give you some practice with what you've already learned about optionals in the next challenge.